This is a special mini lecture for the online physical science 1121 section. We're going to talk about forces. Specifically, we're going to talk about forces on the shuttle carrier Nessus 905. That's this big 747 in the picture. Uh, and here it's carrying shuttle discovery. And it's incredible if you think about the forces uh, acting on the uh, the shuttle carrier, this big 747. First of all, it is experiencing the pull of the Earth. So it has a downward weight force. And the, uh, the mass of uh, the... Uh, of the shuttle carrier is approximately 300 tons, 300 metric tons. The space shuttle also has a weight, so it's going to um, exert about um, a little bit less. It has a mass of 80 tons, so you can figure out what the weight force is for that in newtons. Anyways, um, that's going to exert some downward weight force on NASA 905. Also, there is some forward forces uh, from the jet engines, that's called thrust, and there's also going to be dynamic lift from the wings. Now, the uh, space shuttle up on top, Discovery, will also provide a little bit of lift, and both of them will provide a little bit of drag. In other words, uh, it's air resistance, and that pushes backwards on NASA 905. It also pushes back on the space shuttle, but we're going to be concentrating on NASA 905. Matter of fact, here's the approximate location of the center of mass. So what we're going to do is try to draw in the force vectors as arrows um, with the tails of each force vector, uh, gravity, thrust, drag, lift, uh, the tail of each of those vectors is going to be drawn in at the center of mass. So let's get to work. Here's uh, a set of uh, NASA drawings of the shuttle carrier with the shuttle attached. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, take this side view and abstract the discovery out of the picture uh, just so we can focus on the shuttle carrier the big 747. Okay, here it is, and I put a big black dot kind of in the middle of it to represent the center of mass. And I'm sure that the engineers for Rockwell and for uh, Boeing that designed this know exactly where the center of mass, but this it'll be somewhere approximately here. And what we're going to do is uh, take that dot and uh, let that represent this big 747. So let's get to it. Okay, the first forces are the downward forces. Um, so we have the weight of NASA 905. And we've got some push down from Discovery because of its weight. That's pushing down on uh, NASA 905. So those are both downward forces. Um, and we'll draw those two arrows uh, right up next to the center of mass dot. All right, so... If it's on the runway, that is the force keeping it down on the runway. You turn the engines on, you light them up, and you get some forward thrust, and you move down the runway. And so there's this arrow. Now, the only thrust is from the engines on the 747. So there's only one force vector here. Upward forces. As soon as you develop a little bit of speed, the wings are going to provide dynamic lift. And most of it's going to come from NASA 905, the 747. But Discovery, if you look carefully at the pictures, you'll see that it is um, uh, positioned to provide a little bit of lift at, on its own. Now, the Discovery is not a great flying machine. It, it can fly. It does have lift, but... It's not nearly as much as 747. 747 is, is optimized for um, uh, flight in the atmosphere. The, seven, the shuttle is optimized for space flight. So its wings don't provide as much lift. But they're going to provide a little bit of lift because it does have 
aerodynamic lift. Okay, the forces going uh, backwards or aft in this diagram to the right uh, are drag. And again, you're going to get a little bit of drag um, from the 747 itself. That's the big arrow. And then you'll get a little bit from the space shuttle. That's the little teeny arrow. All right, now what we're going to do is wrangle all these forces together, all these constituent forces, and we're going to synthesize or replace them with one single net force vector. And uh, that's our task in this uh, mini lecture. So let's get to it. Okay, the first task that you do is total up all the upward arrows, all the aft arrows, and all the downward ones. There's only one forward arrow, the thrust, so that one was easy. And these uh, three other arrows, the total upward arrow, is the sum of the dynamic lift arrows from the previous slide. The total aft arrow is the sum of the two drag arrows from the previous slide. And the total downward arrow is the sum of the uh, two uh, downward arrows in the uh, previous slide. All right, so I've got them all tucked away into one. All right, so we're doing good. Uh, but we haven't got one net force arrow. We're working for that. Let's keep going. First, what we'll do is um, stack up the ups and the downs. And then we'll stack up the lefts and the rights and replace them with one vertical arrow and one horizontal arrow. Let's start with the vertical components. So here's what you do. You take your um, downward arrow and you park it up here with its tail exactly in line with the tip of the upward pointing arrow. And as you can see, I haven't done anything with the size of these arrows. I've simply moved them. Uh, as you can see, the downward arrow is a little bit longer. Let me move in some lines so you can kind of compare. Here's the, the net of the downward force. All right, it's this little teeny red arrow. So let me park it down here and rub out those two other arrows. Okay, there's my uh, vertical uh, force, and it's a little bit downward. Now let's do the same thing with the horizontal components. Again, we take one of them and stack its tail up to the tip of the other one, and we'll just go left to right, or actually right to left. So here's the rightward arrow tail lined up with the tip of the leftward arrow, the thrust arrow, and you can see that there's a little bit more thrust well, quite a bit. Um, if we draw on some lines of reference, you can see that here's this red arrow. Uh, that is the excess uh, leftward uh, force from the thrust. And you better have more thrust than you have drag, otherwise you ain't going to go anywhere. All right, and that's, you know, the 747. We know it flies. We know it can move down the runway. Uh, so it's going to have more thrust then it has drag. All right, so let's rub out those two big black uh, constituent arrows and just kind of ease this red one over to the side. Okay, so now we have uh, the total horizontal and the total vertical uh, squared away. But we are not done yet. Uh, we still have to replace those two uh, with one net force arrow. And here's a blow up. I've magnified it three times so it doesn't look so teeny. And uh, let's work with this one. Okay, now we're going to get the net arrow, uh, the net force uh, arrow from these two. And if you recall from reading, you take two arrows, uh, two force arrows, if they're not in the same direction, and you form a parallelogram. In this case, the two arrows are at right angles, so it actually forms a rectangle. And so let's park the uh, vertical out here at the tip of the horizontal, like that. And then we go from the tail of the horizontal at the center of mass to the tip of the vertical arrow, way out here to the left. And we sketch that in. There's our net force vector. All right. And that is the diagonal of a rectangle. 
it form and you can see that it forms a right triangle, kind of a slivery one, off to the left. All right, now let's bring the 747 back in. And here's what we've got. We've got um, a lot of constituent forces, and they've all been replaced with a single net force vector that I've got sketched in here. And I didn't, I, I, don't, I don't have any idea of the magnitude of the forces on a 747. I just dreamed up a few uh, vectors, and I thought, okay, this one looks like it might be good. And, uh, and then we just did the, 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 the diagrams. We worked all the arrows uh, the way I figured them out. One of the nice things about this is you can tell the direction of the acceleration. So in, with these constituent forces, the net force would be slightly downward, and the 747 would be uh, taking a shallow dive. And you may say to yourself, Dr. B, why... Uh, why do you actually want to fly a 747 under power downward? In other words, why do you want to accelerate uh, in a shallow dive? Well, uh, one of the reasons you want to do that is because eventually you want to be able to separate the space shuttle. And they have done this, as you can see in this photograph. And believe it or not, that tilt angle is less than one degree away from the tilt angle I completely made up in this example. So I was very uh, fortunate uh, with the arrows that I chose. I didn't do it ahead of time. It just worked out uh, really nicely. This is the um, one of the first flight tests of the Shuttle Enterprise, which was never designed for space flight per se. It was only used to test the re-entry uh, flight characteristics of the space shuttle. The other five shuttles were meant to fly in space, but not this particular one. It was it was a prototype designed to fly in the atmosphere only. And here it is separating. This is one of the first early tests. Matter of fact, this is NASA 905, and you can see if you look at it, it still has a, a American Airline colors on it. Uh, they had just gotten it. Uh, out of the boneyard in uh, New Mexico and refurbished it and put in uh, extra reinforcement to carry the shuttle. And it still had America Airlines uh, colors on it. And it had, uh, of course, it had the NASA logo up there, uh, NASA 905. Anyway, so that's um, our little workout with net force vectors and how you put together a net force arrow uh, from a set of constituent forces. And the one that we chose to try out was the space shuttle carrier NASA 905.